Hiya, and welcome back to Cilio Tales of a New Dawn. Hmm. The game that teaches us that if you want to get with your best friend, get another best friend to uh, be your wingman. Hiya! <laughs> I swear to god, I'm going to have to, like, actually sit down and write some jokes to say at the beginning about these games. I I'm going to have to, like, at some point sit down and write some jokes, because I tried to do this with Echo, failed, and then would come up with some kind of bullshit line later on, like, halfway through the stream. Anyways, let's just hop right in. Finally, the countless minutes that had stood between me and the beginning of my shift had dwindled to a precious few, prompting me to begin traveling in the direction of Ty's bar. By sheer coincidence, I watched in surprise as Diego emerged only meters ahead of my position, exiting a shoe shop donning a brand new pair of slick black work boots. With our destination set, I kept Diego company on the remainder of our journey as he complained about his new footwear with each and every step that he took. Ugh. I'm going to be battling blisters for weeks. Hey, hey, my dudes. Like, welcome to Ty's bar. Uh, what? Oh, I, uh, I guess it's another thing I forgot to mention to you, huh? Forgot? Sure, Ty's rubbing off, rubbing off on you, dude, and I don't like it one bit. I, I don't know about that, and to be fair, I didn't expect Russell to start so quickly. It's going to be totally killer working with you, my dude. Ty hit me up, like, yesterday afternoon, asked if I wanted a job. I already knew him as well as both of you guys, and well, I get the feeling I could learn a whole heap from working here. So yeah, I was like super eager to get started. As soon as I was free this morning, I came straight in. I was impressed by Russell's initiative and culinary talent when we were all out camping. Oh, and his good vibe too. He also wanted to ease the burden on you the next time he and I head off somewhere. So you won't have to work long hours and be in charge the whole time. Uh, really? He was thinking of me? Definitely. He was very clear about it. Huh, well, uh, geez, ain't gonna lie, being Ty's only other employee has been tough at times. I admit that I am looking forward to the time off, and well, you seem like a cool and laid-back kind of guy, Russell. I think you'll fit right in. Yep, glad to have you aboard, Russell. You're gonna kill it, I just know it. Thanks, my dudes. Working with friends is gonna be, like, totally fun. Like, getting paid to hang out, almost. <laughs> I guess it kind of is like that sometimes. Still hard work, though. Oh, hey. Diego put his belongings on the counter in front of Russell. Mind putting these beneath the register for me? I'm gonna go check in with the boss, let him know we're both on deck. Sure thing, my dude. Diego offered an appreciative grin before navigating his way behind the counter and through the swinging door that led into the kitchen. Russell then retrieved Diego's belongings from atop the counter and bent down, placing them beneath the register as requested as he failed to muffle the sharp gas of noticeable, notable discomfort. Russell, is something wrong? Are you hurt? What, me? I've, like, never been better, my dude. I'm just a little, like, tender, that's all. Ah, gotcha. You know, Diego just got some new shoes and had to walk half a mile from the food court to work in them. Complained the whole way about blisters. It felt like slapping him upside the head. After all that walking we did, he knows nothing about blisters. <laughs> if only that were, like, the extent of my problem, man. Huh? What do you mean? A combat tournament, my dude. Don't you, like, remember? I had my heat this morning before I started work. Oh, right. I smacked my forehead in disappointment and toward my own forgetfulness. Russell had indeed mentioned, on several occasions no less, that he would be fighting his first match this morning. So, how'd it go? Kick some ass? Nah, I guess that's, like, what I get for being unprepared, my dude. I knew I'd have my work cut out for me, but jeez, this was on a whole other level. Maybe I was, like, just super unlucky. Axe definitely thought so. Oh, you lost? Yeah, dude. Wasn't even, like, close or anything. I got totally creamed. Didn't even manage, like, a single pin. Damn. Sorry, Russell. That's a real shame. Nah, it's not so bad, my dude. Like I said to Axe this morning, in the end, the best fighter, like, won. So, like, so it's like, all is well in balance within the universe, or whatever, you know? It was just how it was meant to play out. And maybe the pairing was just bad luck. He and I were on a totally different level, man. But still, with talent like that in the tournament, I probably just saved myself a whole lot of hassle. Who was it that you fought? Some polar bear. Big dude. Kinda like Diego's size. Real mean in the ring, but super impressive too. Like I said, I got beaten fair and square. He deserved that one. 
Well, I'm glad to see you're not too cut up about it. One of the things Ty really liked about you was your positive attitude. I bet he's glad you're taking it to so well, too. You gotta look on the bright side, my dude. Life is real, like, mixed bag. It's what you make of it that counts. But yeah, I ain't upset. Think of it like an up-and-close personal lesson or something, dude. Although, after the fight, I went over to congratulate him. Told him I was super impressed and that he was amazing. He, uh, he didn't, like, say anything. He sort of stared at me with this grumpy expression. Really? How rude. Eh, I don't know, my dude. Maybe he just didn't know how to take the compliment. That's what I'm going to choose to believe anyway. Like I said, it's what you make of it. Our discussion was interrupted by Diego's return from the kitchen as he took his position at the bar and turned towards the two of us, ready to relay Ty's instructions. Okay, so uh, Ty wanted me to pass a few things on. The first thing was for Aiden here, and was mad gay as hell, so I ain't repeating it out of self-respect. You'll just have to ask him yourself, Aiden. <laughs> You're pretty much the gayest person here, Diego. Hey, am not? That's totally you, Mr. Rumble in the Jungle. Hey, shut up! Called it. Shit, I didn't. Damn it, Diego. You promised you wouldn't tell a soul. S sorry, I didn't... I didn't mean to. I, I bet Russell doesn't even care. Hell, for all we know, he might be the gayest person here instead. Who, me? Diego, we don't even... Only on, like, Tuesdays, my dude. <laughs> huh? Russell exercised his right arm to remain silent, merely bearing his wide and toothy grin at the two of us with no further... Context. Admittedly, Russell's vague, wet response raised some questions. For example, what about the rest of the week? <laughs> okay, well, gay shit aside, I'm on bar and Mr. Tuesday over here is on the register. Aiden, Ty says your priority is to support him and help him out if he gets stuck on anything. Otherwise, you're an extra pair of hands. Help clean, help serve, you know, all that good shit. Sounds good. I assume Ty's busy in the kitchen? Yep, we've got a catering order to fulfill. Since when do we do catering? Apparently Ty's delivering meals to a local hospital or something. I thought for sure that would be more Lucas's field of expertise, but Ty knows what he's doing, I guess. Well, anyway, it looks like we're in charge out here until he's finished. I'm, like, a little nervous, dudes. It's okay, Russell, I've got your back. Just remember to greet the customers as they come in, and I'll be right here to help you out, help you with their orders. Yep, and if you ever feel overwhelmed, just think, Tuesday's only five days from now. Four, Diego. Uh, four, right, four days from now. Hang on. Tuesday, Monday, Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Friday, oh god, it's Friday! I'm a goddamn idiot because it says Friday right there. <laughs> Alright, thanks dudes, I'll do my best. You've got this, man. Okay, welcome to Ty's Bar. Welcome to Ty's Bar. Welcome to Ty's Bar. I've got this. Welcome to Ty's, to Ty's Bar. Welcome. Our attention was drawn to the bell on the door as it rung, indicating the arrival of a new customer. Russell turned towards the door, beaming his brightest and toothiest grin. Welcome to Ty's Bar. Can I... Ah, oh, heck. Hold up! Oh. Hi, welcome to Ty's Car. <laughs> Ty's Car? I must say, it has quite a ring to it. Sorry, it's like my first day. I'm totally nervous. <laughs> oh, I recognize you from your heat this morning. You fought very well indeed and should be proud, my friend. And please, accept my heartfelt congratulations on your appointment here, my good man. I'm certain Ty will take wonderful care of you. <laughs> I wasn't, like, ready for someone so strong. That's all me. But, but thanks anyway, my dude. My dude... Such a delightful and endearing greeting. You may call me Spencer, should you so wish. Although, my dude will no doubt serve as more than a suitable alternative. <laughs> Hold up. Hold up. Okay, so what was that one website where, like, you can make celebrities say whatever you want? What was that one site? Uh... Celebrity text to speech. Fake you. Okay. A fake you. Okay, so category uh television. 
select, uh, I think it's sitcoms. No, not that. Uh, whatever. Damn it. Uh, you know, uh, Sheldon Cooper from The Big Bang Theory? Like, I imagine him talking like that. Just like, such a delightful and endearing greeting. You may call me Spencer, should you so wish, although my duty will no doubt serve as a more than suitable alternative. R right, uh, um, and a very good afternoon to you, to you both as well, Aiden and Diego. Yeah, I tried doing that, I went to the site that I used previously, if, like, personal use stuff, like a, a fake you, I can't remember the uh, full title, but it's like fake you something. And they didn't have who I was looking for, which, admittedly, it wasn't uh, Sheldon Cooper I was looking for. I was actually looking for the guy who played him, uh, Jim Parsons. And a very good afternoon to you both as well, Aiden and Diego. Hello. I took a deep breath, clearing my throat and attracting the attention of the room. Both Russell and Diego seemed nervous and flustered. Russell had a valid excuse, but Diego quite clearly did not. In an attempt to deter any suspicion, I mustered up every last drop of courage that I had and offered our visit a warm and confident greeting. Hey, Spencer, how's things? Things are quite well indeed, Aiden. Thank you for inquiring. And you? How do you fare? Things have been going wonderfully. Thanks, Spencer. My will interest you in a drink. Hmm. Spencer gave my suggestion serious consideration while remaining as calm and dignified as ever. If only the same could be said for Diego, whose jaw had practically hit the ground having witnessed my unparalleled dramatic performance. <laughs> I have to make that now. I have to make that now. Thanks for reminding me that that should exist now. Let me pull up a picture of Spencer. Or rather create a picture of Spencer. Uh, but where's the files at? Uh, sprites, uh, Spencer, Spencer. Bases, uh, yeah, fuck. Here we go. Motherfucker. I'm sorry, I need to see Spencer say Bazinga now. I, I need to see that shit now. <laughs> hold up, hold up. Okay, uh. What was it? Uh, what's under extra? Oh, it's just the glowing eyes, okay. So faces. Solomon, what the fuck? TikTok content potential? I don't know. Um, I don't know if I would like dedicate it like solely to a TikTok video. Like I'm considering like uh, like after this stream ends, like immediately going live again, and just like making a TikTok live. I don't know, would, would y'all be down for that? For something like that? Oh god, my computer's mad at me right now. It's like... It's like, why are you doing this? What have I ever done to you? Ah! Add one new source. Uh, what is it? Text, text GDI. Here we go. Spencer gave my suggestion serious consideration while remaining as calm and dignified as ever. If only the same could be said for Diego, whose jaw had practically hit the ground having witnessed my, my unparalleled dramatic performance. 
and as if his jaw hadn't already connected with the floor, Spencer's forthcoming reply would certainly seal the deal. Oh dear, you must forgive my manners. I cannot rightly refuse such an offer two days in a row now, can I? This is a business, after all. Now, warm greetings do little to pay the bills. Spencer's eyes drifted towards the row of wooden shelves positioned to Diego's rear, each shelf lined with countless bottles of alcohol which increased in value alongside their verticality. Naturally, Spencer's gaze wasted no time on the lower shelves, instead skipping directly to the very top. He surveyed the range of options with intense focus and more than a hint of unmistakable intrigue. Finally, his gaze and Diego's disconnected as he presented him with a polite smile alongside his carefully prepared question. Diego, you made a suggestion on my last visit, did you not? What was that again? I remember notes of cinnamon and a hint of spice. Oh, um, th the important Ortegan fine fire water, right? B -b Bottles unopened. W would you like to do the honors? Hmm. Spencer returned his focus to me, a warm yet inquisitive expression on his face as he presented yet another question, this time intended for none other than yours truly. What do you think, Aiden? I haven't had the privilege myself, but at that price, I'm sure Ty knew what he was getting himself into. You are quite right. There are few people whose tastes I trust quite as much as Ty's. And so without further ado, might I request two glasses? The first, the first of which should be neat, and the second, Aiden, how would you like yours, my friend? In surprise, I choked a little on my saliva coughing for several long moments before gradually regaining composure. It seemed as though my feigned confidence had fallen short after all as Spencer caught me off guard with such an unexpected curveball. Um, I, I don't think I should be drinking on the job. Dude! I turned to Diego, whose expression betrayed his defiance. There was no telepathy required to understand that it was Diego trying to say, This is our chance. Take the damn drink. Of course, my number one priority was doing right by Ty, something Spencer had clearly anticipated and very quickly sought to address. Fear not, my friend, I can offer my assurance that Ty's approval is all but guaranteed. In fact, I could even share a relative, relevant anecdote that you may find amusing. That is, of course, if you do to the honor. Fear not, for I shall not take any offense should your duties require you to come and go. I didn't know if Spencer's word could be trusted in terms of Ty's approval, but just like Diego, I understood that this situation was something of an unexpected blessing, something that I would have been incredibly foolish to decline. Though I was worried about the cost of such an extravagant beverage. Are you sure this is okay, Spencer? It's a lot of money, after all. Quite sure, my friend. Worry not about the expense. It will be my treat. All right, I, I accept. On the rocks, thanks. I'm truly delighted by your acceptance. Two Ortegan firewaters, one neat, one on the rocks. And I apologize most profusely for my dreadful manners this afternoon, as it now dawns on me that I have not asked your name. Oh, I I'm Russell. Pleased to, like, meet you, my do- I, I mean, Spencer. The honor is all mine, my dude. Of that, I can assure you. <laughs> Um, the total is, uh, Aiden, help. I made my way over to the register where a very concerned Russell stood, pointing his finger with an expression of panic as he bore witness to the total cost on the invoice. I, I think I, like, broke it, dude. I looked at the price. Imported or taken firewater. $1,195 per shot. A total of $2,390. I knew the bottle was expensive, but even for top shelf, that seemed at least somewhat extreme. Thankfully, I had a trick up my sleeve. Having worked for the company that developed the very software our register was running, I knew just how I might be sure. Highlighting the item on the invoice and pressing F7 on the keyboard revealed inventory information. On the screen, I, should, I could see that Ty had imported a single bottle three and a half months ago and had not sold a single glass until now. The total cost of the bottle, including import and custom expenses, was just shy of $9,000. With the bottle containing approximately 11 shots, this worked out at a notable yet not unreasonable profit, something that was necessary for top shelf liquor in order to account for the potential losses via spillage or poorly measured shots. I believe that the price was 100% correct. It's $1,195 a shot. Is that okay, Spencer? Very much so, my friend. Holy cow. Russell sent the transaction to the terminal, anticipating that Spencer would pay via card. This was not an unreasonable expectation. After all, the majority of our transactions were electronic, and for such a large transaction, it seemed foolish to expect the customer to carry around such an overwhelming quantity of cash. To our collective surprise, when Spencer reached into his jacket and retrieved a small stack of notes before placing them atop the counter with the band securing the bundle together. The band, something typically found in large unbroken quantities of banknotes, claimed to contain twenty one hundred dollar notes to a total of two thousand dollars. Reaching into his coat once more, Spencer revealed several more loose notes which he used to make up the shortfall. The eventual quantity atop the bar counter remained amounted to a cool two thousand five hundred dollars in total. Please, split the extra between the three of you as thanks for the wonderful service. Wow, like, thanks, dude. That's totally generous of you. 
Russell cheerfully collected up the money and processed the transaction with his typical bright and toothy smile while Diego was busy preparing our drinks. He placed several ice cubes in one of the glasses and finally broke the seal on the expensive bottle of imported liquor, matching each shot in a small measuring vial before pouring it in each of our glasses. I have never served any drink more than a few hundred do few hundred in value at the bar. I recall Ty having said something about measuring shots over a certain value, and why not? After all, it made perfect sense. With drinks that expensive, a tiny mistake could result in a major loss. Having finished, Diego passed the two glasses to Spencer, who accepted them both with a kindly nod. Come now, Aiden. Follow me. I acknowledged Spencer's request with a nod before turning towards Diego, who still appeared to be incredibly confused and could no doubt see the concern that was apparent on my face. Truth be told, I didn't know quite what I was getting myself into here. I certainly had not expected anything like this to happen. I'm reminded of Dom's words spoken earlier that day, that we shouldn't take any risks, that it was better to play things safe. What was safe about this? About sharing a drink with the guy? I swallowed nervously and took several deep breaths in an attempt to calm my nerves. As ready as I would ever be, I walked out from behind the bar and followed Spencer to a booth situated next to the windows on the opposite side of the bar. Was there a reason Spencer had picked a location so far from the counter? Perhaps he did not wish for a conversation to be overheard, and if so, what was he... What exactly was he hoping to discuss? Having arrived at our table, Spencer took a seat at on one side of the booth before politely motioning for me to sit in the opposite position, a request which I obediently fulfilled. He then handed my drink across the table towards me, that same warm smile on display all the while. I politely nodded in appreciation as I gazed downward at the bronze-colored liquid containing within my drink, my nose twitching involuntarily as the distinct blend of exotic spices overcame my sense of smell. Now then, I promised to tell you an anecdote, did I not? Fear not, it is only quite brief, but before I begin, Diego, he is your best friend, is he not? You have known one another for a number of years now. Uh, it was immediately evident that Spencer knew a great deal about my life, but why begin the conversation with that? Was it some kind of power move, something to assert the rules for the conversation going forward? Or was it nothing more than confirming relevant detail to his anecdote? Perhaps my suspicion was leading me astray. Having no reasonable excuse not to, I decided to answer Spencer's question honestly. That's right, about four years now, we dormed together at university back in Sidonia. He was a year ahead of me, moved here to Woodcrest about two years ago when he got his degree. I just moved over myself. Life in the big city was a farce, and, well, I missed my best friend. I spoke about myself without restraint, not quite knowing for sure what things Spencer already knew and what things he did not. Regardless, he gave no indication that the information I'd given was already known to him, instead smiling warmly as he responded. I see. And from what I hear, things have gone very well for you since you arrived in Woodcrest. I must offer my heartfelt congratulations to you. Th thank you. Uh, but the anecdote, I apologize for the distraction. Back when I first visited this fine establishment, there were only two people on the books. A former employee named Vanessa, who departed some time ago in search of grand adventure in the wider world. And of course, the owner himself, Ty. At the time, the most sophisticated beverage available to order was an aged brandy, going for a more $350 for the whole bottle. I had been meaning to visit this bar for quite some time, being something of a connoisseur of fine beverages. But alas, with such lackluster offerings, I found myself sorely disappointed. I offered Ty some suggestions, and not only was he incredibly receptive to them, but he insisted that I promise to return at a later date once he made the, appropri once he made the appropriate changes. I agreed, returning several weeks later to find several tastefully chosen and high-end bottles on the newly fitted top shelf of the bar. There was also a new face behind the counter, your best friend Diego. And that night, Ty insisted that he and I share a drink, much like you and I are doing now. He later told me that this was one of his key motivations in hiring Diego in the first place, to allow himself the opportunity to drink on the job. Ha! <laughs> I'm sure he has a more elegant way of describing it, even if the facts remain unchanged. But I can't help but wonder why. Ah, uh, quite. But credit well deserved, he went out of his way to ensure the time I spent here was most memorable and enjoyable indeed. And he had chosen some very fine beverages to boot. Perhaps the joke was on me all along? After all, I came back many a time and spent something of a fortune in this fine establishment. Truly a masterful businessman. You know, your outfit alone probably makes you a target. It's hard to look at the way you're dressed and think of anything other than how deep your pockets must be. Indeed, indeed, I am certainly came to this very same conclusion. But of the myriad regrets that have accumulated through throughout my life, the time and money I spend here is most certainly not among them. Spencer raised his glass to his beak and took a delicate sip of the contact lens his face quickly lighting up with this cheerful satisfaction. My, my, as ever, Ty has outdone himself. However, I fear that the ice present in yours will do little but water it down. May I suggest you make a start while the beverage is still undiluted? Oh. 
I collected a fork from the cutlery holder atop our table and one by one, I scooped out each of the ice cubes before placing them on a napkin as not to create a mess all over the wooden table. Spencer delivered an approving smile as I raised the mildly chilled yet newly neat drink to my lips and took a sip. As the liquid made contact with my tongue and traveled down my throat, it set everything a touch to blaze, a searing inferno accentuated by the curious sweetness of the cinnamon. I began to cough, not unlike I had done behind the counter only minutes ago, but this time with a considerably better excuse. Once the raging wildfire settled to a slow and gentle burn, I allowed my tongue to, to lull lazily from my mouth as I took a series of labored and heavy breaths, trying to regulate the abnormal heat which had spread throughout my body. It is quite something, is it not? Tell me, have you ever visited Ortega? <laughs> uh, nope, never. It is surprisingly temperate temperate during the summertime, but plays n the place hosts to one of the coldest, most harsh winters imaginable. The Ortegan people have brewed fire water just like this for millennia. The unique recipe is known to increase your body temperature, perfect for those 40 below winter days in the southern capital. These days, one can obtain fire water for a dime a dozen, as it were, but it is little more than a novelty, lacking in those unique effects the genuine article is so widely renowned for. For the authentic product, you can expect to pay a significant premium, especially in this part of the world. Thankfully, I am very pleased to report that the beverage we share is very much the real deal. Although, judging by your tongue, you are already quite aware. I bashfully retracted my tongue, feeling a sting of shame for having it been pointed out. All I could do to try and cool myself down suffice it to say they didn't call it fire water t without good reason. <laughs> you and Ty, you and Ty, a taste for fine booze is something you both have in common. Indeed we do. Spencer smiled warmly as he elegantly enjoyed another sip from his glass. Not wanting to be left behind, I... Bird facts. Bird. Not wanting to be left behind, I braced myself for the impending wave of searing heat that and followed suit. Much to my displeasure, the burn was no less unpleasant the second time around. Ah, husky, huskies, we're just not, not designed for this. Spencer smiled, a clear lack of offense toward my distinct absence of finer taste. At long last, I plucked up the courage to ask him a question of my own, one that I had been wondering since he first extended his request. Hey, Spencer, thanks for the drink, it was very kind of you, but I hope I don't seem unappreciative or rude in wondering why you did so in the first place. Oh? Spencer swore the contents of his glass absent-mindedly as he considered his answer. Concluding this with another sip followed by a satisfied grin, our eyes connected as he delivered his response. Well, I have known Ty for some time now, and I suppose it would not be inaccurate to say that his well-being is, is of great importance to me. He has spoken about you at length, and said many wonderful things. Hmm. I suppose you may think of me as something of a supportive spectator. I wish nothing but the best for you both. Normally, I would not become involved in other people's affairs like this, but... Well, you know what they say about extreme situations requiring similarly extreme measures. You could say I have a vested interest in how things may proceed. Spencer's own response was no less cryptic than the ones Ty had been feeding me this entire time. I couldn't help but feel sorely disappointed. I was no closer to understanding what was going on. And sure, perhaps you could argue that Spencer was at least proving that he was not a threat. But how was I supposed to know that doing so wasn't exactly what he planned? How did I know he wasn't lulling me into some kind of false sense of security? As always, the evasive answers only raised even more, ever more questions than before. It was frustrating. And perhaps, my, against my better judgment, I decided to let Spencer know that. You know, Ty keeps a lot of secrets from me. There's like this whole big piece of his life that he makes sure I remain ignorant about, yet he assures me that I am the most important thing in his life. I have faith in him. But I guess I'm still a little scared of it all, of the things I don't know. Each and every time I ask him about it, he gives me these vague and nondescript answers. He tries to quell my fears with smoke and mirrors. And I, just wound, and I just wind up more confused and with more questions than before. I guess the reason I'm telling you this is because your answer to my question just now, it sounded like something you'd have said. Spencer's manners for the duration of our conversation had been mostly impeccable, his intense eye contact rarely being broken except when necessary. Yet here, he suddenly appeared to be somewhat conflicted as his line of sight fell tableward. Spencer staring at the knots in the varnished wood as he considered just how to respond. I understand that such secrecy tends to arouse suspicion. That is only a natural response in your circumstances. I'm tired of being told I have nothing to worry about because I only wind up worrying about it even more. I'm exhausted by the constant doubt and insecurity that comes with all this. I'm just so frustrated about being kept in the dark. I do not begrudge you those emotions. I can offer you my assurance that Ty's intentions are good. 
but I understand that the road to hell is paved with similar such intentions. I hope you not hold any of this against him. He he does only what he must. It's clear to me that you know, but I guess you won't tell me the answers either, huh? I apologize. Spencer's unusual appearance certainly provoked alarm in those who witnessed him, his shroud of secrecy only causing that alarm to fester into fear, doubt, and distrust. There is also the consideration that even now, somewhere deep within my mind, my instincts were telling me to drop everything and run. That the man sitting before me was somehow not what he seemed to be. He was different. And I simply could not articulate why I felt that way. I didn't rightly know myself. But yet, there was something else about him. Perhaps it was a mask to conceal his true identity. Perhaps we, uh, we, all, we had all had him pegged so very wrong this entire time. Because Spencer was sweet. Was kind. Sweet even. Clearly generous. Very well educated. Refined. Tasteful. Articulate. Weirdly enough, these were all qualities that remind me a great deal of Ty, except everything dialed up to 11 and incorporated into a thin, almost frail-looking body. Nonetheless, the fact that Spencer clearly knew what Ty and Lucas knew strongly implied that Spencer was somehow involved as opposed was to merely being some knowledgeable third party. And while I had not learned a great deal from our conversation, it had essentially confirmed something that I had suspected for quite some time. That the secrecy surrounding Spencer and the secrets that Ty and Lucas kept, I had little doubt that these were one and the same. I mulled over what all of this could mean as I took another sip from my glass. There were so many possibilities, but so few that necessitated such a level of secrecy. It just didn't make any sense. As I stared at the table deep in my own thoughts, I took a final sip of my drink, my mind distracted from the cries of mercy em emanating from my singed taste buds. I hope that, despite your disappointment, you have enjoyed our time together this afternoon, and I do so dearly hope that my choice in beverage did not cause you discomfort. <laughs> Something of an acquired taste, I think. Are Tegans common in this part of the world? Hmm? What a strange question. How do you mean? Oh, please, do not mind me. The answer is no. In fact, they are no longer common anywhere in the world, not even in our beautiful homeland. Not unlike every other species, their population has been in steady decline for quite some time now. But you see, their circumstances are somewhat, are somewhat different, resulting in them being something of an evolutionary canary, if you will. What? An ev what? An evolutionary canary? What does that mean exactly? Ah, uh, but pay me no mind. I would hate to bore you with all of the statistics and science. I leaned forward, a clear indication of my intrigue. I had heard the odd thing here and there about the Ortegan people, but I have never taken the time to learn their full story. While enjoyed was perhaps too strong of a sentiment, I had experienced an authentic beverage from their homeland, something that struck up something of a curiosity within me. If Spencer had proven anything thus far, he was a veritable man mountain of knowledge. This seemed like a good opportunity to learn something new, and all the while appealed to my hidden agenda throughout extent or, through extending our ca You never can. You can never have enough. All the while appealing to my hidden agenda through extending our encounter and giving myself more time to make some kind of assessment. You say that as though I wouldn't be interested. I can handle statistics and science, and I'd really be interested to hear what you have to say. Ah, I appreciate your candor, but I'm afraid that is quite a lengthy tale. One I am most surprised you do not know, considering your Ortegan acquaintance. Ortegan acquaintance? I don't know any. I don't know any Ortegans. Do I? Indeed, you do. How curious that a member of the rarest Orte Ortegan subspecies would keep such a fascinating detail to himself. I cannot help but wonder why. Nonetheless, your Ortegan acquaintance is a southern winter dragon by the name of Jay. Jay? Huh. I had no idea. He definitely never said anything to me, but I suppose we don't actually know one another all that well. Perhaps in time you will come to? After all, I hear through the grapevine that he has become the new bass guitar player for the Black Claws. Imagine my excitement when I learned that Ty was making his long overdue return to the stage. I know how much he missed it some days. I can only surmise that it is you you I have to thank for that. It warms my heart to see him so passionate about his craft, and no doubt he hopes to impress you as well. You knew it was me, huh? I guess it, that is kind of obvious. It's a really good thing for him. Lucas, too, for that matter. And Jay's really thrilled to be part of it all. Quite the win-win scenario for everybody involved. Exactly. Well, except for maybe Glenn. But hey, you never answered my question before. You called Jay's people an evolutionary canary. You can't just drop a fancy term like that without explaining what it's all about. Very well, but forgive me for keeping this brief. It is a complex situation that would take a great deal of time to explain in full, and after all, you are still on the clock. Tell me, have you heard of... DCD before, it stands for Doomsday Clock Disorder. I had. It was a topic that had periodically made the news and was a big deal for their studying genetics at university. 
I didn't know exactly what it was, but I knew it was something that our collective society was quite concerned about. TCD, in simple terms, is a genetic flaw shared among each and every single civilized species living on this planet. It is something that has been dormant in our genetic code since the beginnings of our various species. But for reasons as yet unresolved by science, this genetic sequence seemed to suddenly shed that dormancy without rhyme or reason. Within 50 years, no single species remained unaffected. But the Ortegan people were an extreme outlier in this regard. While the vast majority of species have spent the past hundred or so years exhibiting the gradually developing symptoms of this bizarre disorder, the Ortegans have been doing so for have been doing so for much, much longer, exhibiting an array of more advanced symptoms that threaten the very existence of their species. And of course, each and every one of us shares the same boat, as it were. It is only a matter of time before these same symptoms arise among our, among other species as well. Hence, an evolutionary canary. As yet, no solution has been found, and one can only hope we are not too late. Yeesh, you said that all of our species have been exhibiting symptoms for a while now. What exactly are these symptoms? Are they that are they things that are, say, visible to the average person? Uh, very much so. It is not known where DCD come, came from and why. It is not known why the sequence for DCD only exists in intelligent civilized species and is totally absent in our wild counterparts. But its purpose and mechanism of action leaves very little to the imagination. In a nutshell, it is a genetic kill switch. Once triggered, the effective species will become extinct in the next three to five hundred years. Yet it achieves mass extin extinction without killing a single individual along the way. What constitutes success in a species can vary greatly. Yet the single most important precursor to evolutionary success is the species' ability to replicate itself, to multiply and reproduce, the very same attribute which Doomsday Clock Disorder works to dismantle. Which brings me back to your question. There are a variety of symptoms which can manifest throughout the process. However, with the exception of the Otagans right now, there are only two. And yes, not only are their symptoms visible, but in fact, they should be obvious. Right, so it sets about stopping the species from reproducing. You know, I have a vague feeling I know where this is going. I know this will start making sense. DCD was not something discovered by scientists, doctors, or even genet geneticists. In fact, it was, in fact, first theorized by a, demogra by a demographic graphist, a person who studies growth and trends among the population. His theory sought to explain an, inexplic an inexplicable and unnaturally uniform tread among a diverse populace, something that fell within the margins of error year on year and escaped scrutiny until decades later. The impact of these small variances have become rather more severe. The first of these trends was an overall decline in birth rate, something that quickly developed into a population deficit that continues to grow in severity to this very day. And you should look into finer de look into the finer details that make up the statistic. You will find even more cause for concern. The population may may have been in decline, yet this was in direct opposition to sharp up to sharp uptick in the male birth rate. Of course, I can I am sure you can imagine what this means: a sharp decline in girls being born. Exactly, and the increase of males' birth, while substantial, did not make up the shortfall. Thus, the population continued to dwindle and has continued doing so for many years. Did you know, Woodcrest currently holds a population that is 76.2% male. I gotta admit, reasons aside, I kind of like it that way. Which is a flawless demonstration of the second of those two trends. Eh? What do you mean? It was also observed that less and less of the population would identify as heterosexual, a trend whose momentum was consistent with the patterns set by those other trends. While all the other sexualities enjoyed a period of slow yet sustained growth, a per the percentage of those surveyed who would identify as exclusively homosexual saw, saw whole percentage increases year on year for 37 years uninterrupted. Damn, you have a point. Cydonia was pretty gay at times, but even I was surprised by just how gay-dominated Woodcrest seems to be. Is there a reason for that? Or There are several reasons, but the most significant among them is that Woodcrest has thrived due to a greener grass type, type of situation. As you no doubt know firsthand, life in the big cities like Cydonia has become prohibited prohibitively expensive while forcing residents to endure gridlock traffic and a poor quality of life. On the flip side, Woodcrest offered affordable affordable living in a beautiful and lively location with, pl with plentiful employment and all of the amenities one could desire. Despite the overall trend, Woodcrest continues to grow at a very healthy rate with the vast majority of new arrivals falling into the 1830 age bracket. A younger generation who, especially when compared to their parents' generation, is dominated by homosexual men. With the younger-than-average population, Woodcrest is a glimpse at how the average town or city will look ten years from now. Jeez, that explains a lot. I take it this is this is all why the Ortegans are struggling with their numbers? In part. Unfortunately, the tale is far more complicated than that. A very long time ago, Ortega attempted to 
attempted to increase her birth rate through a campaign which incentivized and which incentivized and glorified parents. It was a contentious scheme, but ultimately one which achieved the intended purpose, at least in the beginning. At last, the population began to dwindle once more and through a renewed and heavy and heavy-handed push that almost served to shame the non-reproductive members of their population. This eventually erupted into a civil war that cost more Tegan lives than remain in the present day. It was not until years later that they realized a large portion of individuals were being born infertile, and much like the and much like with the other trends, eventually a fertile individual in the, of the species became an incredible rarity. Truly put that in perspective, the current population of Ortegans is about 170,000 individuals. 96.2% of that population is male. Of the 3.8% re remaining that are female, only 6% of those are fertile. If you do the math, that is 39 fertile women. 39? That's really bad. But wait, the homosexuality part affects women too, right? Indeed, you can count the fertile homosexual heterosexual females of the species on one hand, and unless we can find a way to stop the doomsday clock from ticking, the very same fate will befall us all. I never knew things were quite so dire, out of sight, out of mind, I suppose, nonetheless. I wondered if I should broach the topic with Jay the next time I saw him. Perhaps he would have some interesting insight? That was, assuming it wasn't a sore topic. Oh dear, I apologize. I apologize. I hope to keep this brief. Yet concision is quite clearly not in my nature. At the very least, I hope that you have learned something useful. Thanks, Spencer. It was actually really enlightening. It seems like you're very well informed. Indeed, I know a great many of things. Aiden, I am nothing if not well informed, something that is not limited to the sciences either. For instance, I know that you and Ty first met Jay when he acted in his capacity as your waiter at the newly opened Cafe Day. I don't know how to say that. Self voicing enabled. Spencer, indeed. I know a great many things, Aiden, I am nothing if not well informed. Something that is not limited to the sciences, either. For instance, I know that you and Ty first met Jay when he acted in his capacity as your waiter at the newly opened Café du Vieux Monde. Day. Self voicing to say. By sheer chance, I happened to notice him visiting Ty's stall during one of his breaks on the night of the festival. I bet you're also about to tell me you were shulking in the shadows of the strip club and saw Fair together, too. A strip club? My, my, I was not aware you enjoyed such interests. I, I don't, I just. Crap, I had nobody but to blame for myself. I had nobody to blame but myself for that one. I desperately attempted to correct my course in fear that this information would make it back to Ty somehow. I was sure that Ty would have understood, but it was a, but it was nonetheless a conversation that would be easier not had at all. Okay, you know Lucas, so I'm sure you're familiar with Eric. Regrettably. <laughs> Everyone hates Eric. Perfect answer. Anyway, he found out what had happened between Ty and I earlier that day and dragged me along to a strip club to try and cheer me up. It didn't work, obviously. All I wanted was Ty, not a bunch of male strippers. Anyway, Jay was there. Apparently the two are friends. Fear not, my good friend. I understand. And lack of, and lack any desire to pass judgment, nor do I intend to inform Ty. A conversation best avoided entirely, no? Uh, I found myself somewhat taken aback by Spencer's words. They were a near replica of the very same sentiment I'd thought only moments before. Surely it was just a coincidence. Ah, uh, but the curtain, ah, uh, but the curtain must fall, lest Ty demands that I con- that I cover your wages from my own pocket. I simply felt it important to properly introduce myself to you again and offer some reassurance. I do hope this has not been uncomfortable for you. No, not at all, actually. If anything, Spencer's velvety smooth tone, elaborate vocabulary, and your radiant kindness had made me feel at ease. It, was, it wasn't to say that I trusted him, certainly not. The fact that he had gone out of his way in an attempt to earn that trust seemed fishy in and of itself. I could not forget that Spencer, like Ty and Lucas before him, had also refused to share certain information with me. He had pointed this encounter as a way to nurture trust. He had poised this encounter to, as a way to nurture trust. And I couldn't help but feel that his reasons for doing so were at least somewhat disingenuous. But how, exactly, and why? If there was one thing that I suspected more strongly than the rest, it was my hunch that all of our previous theories were entirely off the mark. I couldn't rationalize it, but I knew deep down in my gut that there was a whole other perspective to this that I had just... That it just hadn't considered yet. But what stones we left unturned? What else could it possibly even be? Well then, I think it is about time that I let you return to your work. Oh, sure thing. Uh, it was nice getting to properly meet you, Spencer, and thanks heaps for the drinks. For the drink. It was sure an experience. An experience, he says. How delightful. Perhaps we should share another someday? Only if you were gay with tales surrounding that beverage, too. 
Spencer was unable to resist the happy smile that spread across his beak from end to end. It would be my privilege and a pleasure, my good friend. I sincerely cannot wait. Spencer slowly rose from his chair, his every moment careful and deliberate, appearing almost elderly and frail as he did. I wondered to myself if he had been injured somehow. I thought that was interrupted when he spoke up once more. I shall return our glasses to the counter. May I trouble you to summon Ty for me? There's something that I would like to give to him. Oh, sure thing. But before you go, I have one last question for you. I'm certain you have many questions, not merely the one. But please, do ask away. The question on my mind related to his speech. With each and every sentence Spencer had spoken, I was only reminded more and more of Ty. There were key differences in their verbal habits and their delivery, but the similarities between their vocabularies was nothing short of uncanny. Ty once told me that his fanciful way of speaking is something that he acquired from a former friend, and hearing you speak today, it was you, wasn't it? And my former friend, did something happen? That is two questions I think you will find, but to answer the former, I believe you are correct. Ty always possessed a more advanced vocabulary than most, but he accentuated this in my presence and appeared to closely follow my example. What is it that they say? Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery? As for your second question, I am afraid I cannot speak on his behalf. Personally, I consider Ty to be a dearest friend of mine to this very day. But I would understand completely where that sentiment no longer mutual. And with those words, Spencer departed toward the counter to return our used glasses. While he hadn't given me a proper answer to my question, the sadness in his eyes appeared genuine as he departed. Clearly, he had been telling the truth, and he said the situation was complex. Either that, or he was a tremendous actor. I stood up from my chair and followed, Spencer's, and followed in Spencer's footsteps upon arriving back behind the counter. He stood next to the register, cheerfully chatting with Russell as a highly suspicious Diego watched on. As I wandered past, Diego and I locked eyes as he looked back expectantly. I was surprised that he hadn't listened, and, or perhaps he had, simply opting not to leave himself open for another grilling. I brandished a finger, my way of asking that he wait before arriving at the kitchen door. Finally, I would get to say hello to Ty. It was long overdue. As I entered, I spotted Ty standing in the opposite end of the kitchen, busily slicing and dicing ingredients before tossing them into a large, simmering pot. I spoke his name on my approach, an action which prompted his ears to prick up as he spun in place with a dignified yet excitable smile. Ah, Aiden, how lovely to see you, my dear. The two of us instinctively leaned forward, meeting one another in the middle, and shared a lengthy and passion-filled kiss that made it seem as though we hadn't seen each other in years. I am surprised that you have been here for nearly an hour, but have not yet come out to see me. Has been busy out there? You know you can always fetch me should you require any assistance. Nah, there's nothing to worry about. Everything is under control. I have just been a bit distracted is all. Sorry. No apology necessary, my dear. I am certain you have been earning your pay with unrivaled dedication, just as always. Heh, <laughs> yeah, although that reminds me. Ty's mention of pay had drawn my attention to the $200 I had been carrying within my pocket. The very same which had myster mysteriously materialized in my pants the prior night. Reaching into my pocket, I retrieved the money before offering it to a noticeably confused Ty. Oh, w what is this? Can I ask a small favor of you? Please add this to Diego's paycheck. Don't tell him it came from me. Just slip it in there quietly. I, I do hope this is not some money laundering scheme. You know how much I love your naughty side, but this may not be quite what I had in mind. I laughed. I certainly had been behaving rather poorly since Ty and I had gotten together, and so had he, despite being so prim and proper on the surface. I smiled, my mind drifting all, drifting off in all the wrong directions as I grappled with my fragmented focus in order to deliver my response. Don't worry. It's all... It's all above board. Diego is being his usual stubborn self and won't let me reimburse him for rent. I was hoping you might be able to help. I see. Calling out the big guns, then. I'll be glad to assist you in any way that I can, but I do have one small request, if I may. What is it? Keep the $200. I will pay Diego myself. Oh god, not you too. <laughs> well, if it helps, think of it. Think about it this way. He cannot return it to you if you never gave it to him in the first place. Perhaps, but who's to say he's not going to return it to you instead? You are assuming he would not be... He would not do so regardless of source. Touché. Look here. I reached out grasping one of Ty's suspenders and pulled it towards me. Indeed they are. I then slid the $200 beneath, releasing them so they snapped back into place and held the money firmly against Ty's chest. Dear me, is this how you tip all of your bartenders? I laughed once more, genuinely enjoying the cheekiness of Ty's humor as he dutifully retrieved the money before tucking it safely into his pocket. It certainly was a nice change compared to Diego's toilet humor and served to remind me of Ty's more refined taste and greater level of maturity. Well, obviously there's a greater level of maturity between Ty and Diego. There's like a... The only, there's like a 20 year age gap. Diego's like in his 20s.
Wait, no. It'd be a 10-year age gap. Yeah, 10-year yeah, age gap. Very well, then. I will not argue with you on this one. I'd planned to process the paychecks this afternoon, so it should arrive in his account later on this evening. Thanks, Ty. I appreciate it. Diego's been... Diego has been making this very difficult. Of course, my dear. I would not dream of refusing you. Diego knows not what he is in for. Damn right, he doesn't. So what's this about catering? Something about the hospital? Ah, uh, yes. Well, once a year, I prepare meals for those working at the local hospital. Something I've, do I've been doing for more than 20 years now. It began as a way of showing my gratitude for the care they showed Grant towards the end. Of course, that all happened a very long time ago now, but I continue the tradition regardless. After all, they are still out there saving lives each and every day. I even managed to maintain the tradition when I was in the Black Claws full time. Had to save my money leading up to it, and usually just ordered a lot of pizza. That's really sweet, pizza or not. It's a thought that counts after all. I knew there'd be a good reason for what you were doing. I suppose it's handy Russell came on board when he did, huh? Indeed, I had not anticipated it, especially right after his bout in the tournament, but he was very insistent, and truth be told, I'm glad for it. A touch of guilt aside. But I know, I know, it was his decision after all. I have no reason to feel guilty. That's right, you're learning, Ty. We grinned at one another like a pair of total goons before thought, before thoughts struck with like a lightning bolt, reminding me that I had come back here for a specific reason. Shit, Spencer! I excuse me? Damn it! I'm sorry. I completely forgot that Spencer is waiting out front. He uh wants to see you. He is. Goodness, I did not. Timely, something of a distinctively melancholy sigh, shaking his head before turning my gaze with a somewhat sheepish smile. I expect our discussion will require the customary privacy it typically demands. Might I trouble you to keep an eye on things during my absence? Of course. Lead the way. Ty placed his knife on the countertop, resting it beside a variety of half-chopped vegetables. As the two of us then made our way, made our long-awaited return to the front of the bar. On arrival, Spencer was seated patiently at the bar, swirling another half-finished Rotagan firewater while he patiently waited for Ty's reception. S Spencer, I was not expecting you. What a pleasant surprise. Good afternoon, Ty. I apologize for the unannounced visit. Sorry for the wait, Spencer. I got a little distracted. Fear not. Between a terrific shot of firewater and a rather charming shark, there have been no shortage of ways to bide my time. Which reminds me, a most excellent acquisition, Ty. I never knew you were so well-versed in firewater. What can I say? I did my research. It has been on hand for a while now, just waiting for a discerning connoisseur such as yourself. Indeed, I apologize for not doing so much sooner. It pains me to think of such a fine beverage going un unappreciated. Ah, well, no apologies necessary. Perhaps not necessary, but I implore that you accept nonetheless. Very well. Now, to what do I owe the pleasure of your visit? Spencer tossed back the entirety of his remaining drink in a single fiery gulp before carefully rising from his chair, his action conveying a message that Ty understood loud and clear. Russell, may I ask a favor of you? Of course you can, my dude. Just, like, say the word. Please take over in the kitchen on my behalf. The recipe is up on the wall. I believe in your, I believe with your culinary expertise you will have an easy time following along. Sure thing, my dude. I won't let you down. Thank you. With no further delay... Russell passing through the door leading into the kitchen to do as I requested. We're, with Russell on the case, Ty was free to fulfill the Raven's request. Please follow me to my office. We can speak there. Yo, is Diego going to, like, spy on them or what? Spencer nodded before nodded before passing behind the counter and drifting past the two made the two of us together. Upon reaching Ty, they ventured into the kitchen together in total silence as Ty took the lead. I watched as Diego leaned to the right in order to peer through the serving window, which incidentally provided a terrific view of Ty's office door. He watched as Ty opened the door before standing to the side, politely inviting Spencer inside. Having accepted the invitation, Ty followed him through the door before closing it firmly in his wake. This was followed by an audible click, the distinct sound of Ty's office door being locked behind them to prevent any unwanted interruptions. Dude. I know. Tell me, how much of my conversation with him did you overhear? Uh, not a lot. It doesn't help that he speaks so quietly. Heard something about population statistics? Yeah, he told me a bit of the history behind Ortega. A nice accompaniment to an expensive drink, if more than a little depressing and dark. Enough about that. Surely you're thinking what I'm thinking about. Uh, I, I guess I'm not. What is it? Come on, dude. You're seriously forgotten about it already? I scratched my head, confused by whatever it was Diego was implying. In a subversion of the usual circumstances, Diego noticed my obvious confusion and groaned dramatically before finally giving me the answer. Dude, the vents! 
I finally understood what Diego was referring to, just like how he listened in on my conversation with Ty three days prior. He was now suggesting that I should do the very same for the conversation Ty and Spencer were currently sharing. Yeah, I gotcha. Come on, man, the sooner you get out there, the more you'll learn. I don't know, though. Despite everything, I just don't feel comfortable betraying Ty's trust like this. Dude! You heard! They locked the damn door behind them. That's not something he does for just anybody. They're definitely talking about something super secret in there. Diego, Ty is my boyfriend. I, I trust him. Do you really, though? You know he's keeping shit from you. That's going to gnaw at you unless you take this golden opportunity and find out what the hell is going on. Look, if you won't, I damn well will. One of us needs to stay on the bar, and Ty's your boyfriend. I may be nosy, but even I know when to give away. Ty, Lucas, Spencer, clearly, whatever it is, they don't want you to know about it. Better to find out on your own, than having it blow up in your face and regretting not having acted sooner. Ignorance ain't bliss, man. It just ain't. You know damn well. I sighed. I hated that Diego was right. Sure, I trusted Ty. Of course I did. But the doubts and fears remained, slowly festering with time. On one hand, my feelings towards Ty were so incredibly positive and strong. But the longer those doubts remained, the stronger they would eventually become. And how long could I keep those feelings in check? How long would it be before something sends those fears and doubts rushing to the surface like some kind of toxic maelstrom? And it wasn't like my discussion with Spencer had done, had done the situation any favors. Regardless of what, his of what his intentions may have been, I hated that. I hated what I was about to do. But I just had to find out. Where do I need to go? Left out the front door. Left again down the small alleyway. Turn the corner at the end, and there's this big metal thing with a kind of mesh thingy on it. Stick your ear up to that, and you should be able to hear what's happening behind closed doors. All right. But hurry up! It's not like they're going to wait for your slow ass to start listening. Get out there now. Okay, okay, I'm going. I didn't like this, but I felt as though I had few better options. I hated being kept in the dark like this even more. At the very least, I wanted to know, know even if whatever I would learn would have no impact on us. If what was, if it was the what ifs that were driving me around the bend. Okay, I'm gonna like hide the window because like fear. Bazinga. I followed Diego's directions, heading down the alleyway towards the very end. I turned the 90 degree corner, and sure enough, there was some sort of outlet for the ventilation system. It was my lucky day. It was a mild and temperate midfall day, and neither heating nor cooling systems were engaged. If they had been, I doubt I would have been able to hear a single thing over the racket. Instead, when I pressed my ear up to the exhaust, the distinct sound of voices drifted into earshot from afar. It was difficult to hear them clearly, but sufficient enough that I would be able to grasp what was being discussed. I eased into a more comfortable position and strained my ears in an attempt to pick up as much of the conversation as I could. Okay, fear. Spencer took a seat in front of my desk before calmly waiting for me to take my position on the opposite side. I locked the door behind us, making sure that whatever manner of discussion lay in store, it would not be interrupted by unexpected company. I circled around the perimeter of my desk, eventually standing before my leather chair. I took a seat, Spencer and I coming face to face with only the distance of the desk between us. Truth be told, I had not the I, I had not the ease of an idea why he had come, especially without any warning. If he had phoned ahead, I would have visited him instead, or we could have met somewhere less conspicuous. Although I knew full well that if he had come here, he would not have done so without a proper reason for doing so. He knew that I would not take such risks so kindly. Okay, it's safe. I'm sorry, we gotta hide the Bazinga bird. But it's like serious. I, I assume your visit was not inspired by the recent additions of my liquor cabinet. You assume, right? Although it was a terrific excuse nonetheless. Genuine Ortegan firewater. And to think, it was little more than a year back that you tried to peddle that bio brandy. For the record, I always quite enjoyed it, but I'll concede that your influence on my inventory was a positive one indeed. If a little on the expensive side. I am glad that I am glad we are in agreement on that, at least. And humor aside, the lore of a fine drink is insufficient reason alone to pay you a visit. Well, with how things... Well, you understand. I sighed, knowing full well what Spencer was alluding to. But whatever his reasons were, I felt as though his presence here was something of an irresponsible action. Something of a dire risk. On one hand, Spencer's presence had not gone unnoticed. His name being mentioned by both Aiden and Diego in recent, in recent days. Not to mention the other significant risk, after all. How would I explain this encounter to Aiden? Just how much slack would his faith grant me in situations like this? I shook my head with a palpable sense of concern before making eye contact with my visitor once more. He was as calm as ever, his emotions carefully disguised as a lack thereof. 
His mask is so comfortable and perfectly fitting. But I knew how hard this was for him, beneath those layers of masterful composure. The sooner we get this over and done with, the less suspicion we will attract. As good as that is as it is to see you, of course. Very well, then. I've merely come to return something that belongs to you. Spencer's jacket was no mere imitation, despite the condition in suggesting it was almost brand new, but something of an antique, perfectly maintained by Spencer's highly skilled tailorship. Indeed, the tail surrounding ta Spencer's attire was something of a fitting metaphor for the man himself, but it was not the jacket that interested me, more so that Spencer had reached, and reached his hand inside to retrieve whatever object he had in his possession. I knew full well that inside the jacket were several hidden pockets which, with the exception of cash, were only ever used to transport the most precious of cargo. At long last, his hand emerged and an unknown object held carefully within. He extended his reach and motioned for me to hold my hand beneath his own. When Spencer finally released the object from his grasp, I recognized it without a delay. It was a ring, forged from fresh gold, its circumference studded with ruby after precious ruby. I held the ring in my hand, my gaze transfixed. He was right. It was something which held deep meaning to me, which was precisely why I had given it to Spencer in the first place. But I understood but I understood why he returned it, though that did little to ease the sting. As insignificant as this moment seemed, it symbolized finality, and it took every last inch of my restraint not to burst into tears. I closed my eyes instead as I clutched the ring tightly, mourning what I lost in silence before I opened the desk drawer, fishing around in search of something specific. Spencer watched quietly as I retrieved a small, warm length of cord. I combined the two objects before tying the ends of the cord in a knot before throwing it over my head, allowing it to fall into place around my neck and beneath the collar of my shirt with the ring hanging from the bottom as its rubies glistened brilliantly in the light of my office. Deep down, I knew this moment would come, but a part of me still hoped, wished that things could have been different. Spencer sighed, his voice shaking slightly as his near bulletproof composure seemed to falter, his own emotions getting the better of him if only for a brief moment. My apologies. Contrary to what you may think, this never gets any easier. Stop. Stop apologizing. This whole damn mess, it was not your fault. It was never your fault. It was mine. I- Silence. A look of annoyance spread across his face, much like it did every time we tread this conversational ground. I would apologize. He would refuse, instead placing the blame on his own shoulders. I knew exactly what he would say next, only because he had done so several times already. I knew better, but I still allowed this to happen. There were so many times where I could have prevented it, and I did not. I got carried away. If only we could have found a way. Ty, you know this as well as I do. You have to put all of this behind you. Forget about it all. Try to move on. Were it only so easy to do? I try in earnest, but sometimes I feel as though I have backed myself into a corner. With Aiden? Yes, and you are right. So is Lucas. The best thing is to just forget about all of this. Move on. Not let this whole thing become my undoing. And I am trying. God, I am trying. But I felt that you were... Ty, do you feel the same way about Aiden? Let me hear your idea. I want to hear that idea. I sighed, shaking my head yet again. I knew the answer deep within my heart. An answer I struggled to make any sense of. Aiden is so very different, and yet... Inexplic inexplicably, yes. Yes, I do. And I do not understand how it is possible. You may not agree, but you find yourself in a near-perfect situation given the circumstances. As difficult as it may be, you simply need to soldier on. This will get easier in time, that I promise you. You know, he and I shared a glass of firewater in a pleasant chat earlier on. What? I stared at Spencer in disbelief. For the entire time that I had known him, Spencer had maintained a significant distance from everybody and everything, regardless of who they were or if they were trustworthy. Lucas wound up being the one key exception, and it was not something that had been intentional. Instead, Lucas had grown suspicious. In the beginning, I regaled him with stories about the fascinating man I had met, but eventually, I became privy to the realities of Spencer's existence, realities that I could not share with anyone, even my closest friend. Lucas's suspicions surrounded my sudden change in transparency, resulting in him going out of his way to find out what was going on. Eventually, Spencer and I had little choice but to clue him in. He already knew too much. At that point, it was better to pull the trigger ourselves than leave him in the dark. We let him in on everything and had him promise to share in keeping it all a secret. He 
he agreed, and gradually Spencer began to form trust in Lucas as well. But that entire situation was a happy accident. That happy accident being the closest Spencer had ever gotten to actually reaching out to somebody in the entire time we had known one another. Hence my complete and total disbelief when Spencer told me that he had shared a drink with Aiden. Are you crazy? What do you think you're doing? I was attempting to confirm your suspicion. We had spoke for some time and there were no obvious signs, but that is hardly confirmation of anything. B but what if... Relax, with such, with such substantial time spent in my presence, it will become obvious. You only need to observe in the coming days and notify me accordingly. Worry not, we can take care of this. It was foolish of Spencer to do such a thing. I worried for Aiden. Worried that... Worried about what he might be going through. But in a way, Spencer was right. The way we would know, and once we knew, we could then act. Besides, I know he is suspicious of me. With any luck, our meeting will have eased his wariness. What did you tell him? Nothing that you would not have, I can assure you. But I know somebody is digging, watching my movements. Tell me, is Aiden computer literate? He worked for the company that designed my point of sale software, but I do not rightly know the extent of his skill set, or specifically what he specializes in. Why? Whoever it is, they are using the back door to access government records, and they are thorough. They have found things that I've scrubbed clean years ago. You think it is Aiden? I do not know. It is possible, or it could be somebody he knows. At least, I hope that is the case. If there is no way you can trace it, I have done that. The connection is coming from a rogue virtual machine at the university. That is how they have gained access to the secure domain. If I could obtain university logs, I could likely track the origin of the connection. But getting access to those logs has proven difficult. Regardless of whether Aiden is responsible or not, there are too many unknowns for him him not to have theories and concerns. Ignorance, perhaps, would have been bliss, as opposed to becoming con conscious of, of that which he cannot know. I felt an incredible pang of guilt. I was always many different things, but a liar I was not, so instead, when I could speak the truth, I merely did not speak at all, leaving large chunks of important information concealed be beneath a thick black cloud of secrecy. After all, ignorance is oftentimes bliss. Not only had this made things so very complicated with Aiden, but it had also potentially put Spencer in danger. Okay, but note, it's just an idea. It's either relating a friend relating to the fire water drink, hoping they, c they could prevent what would have happened. Or he had an association with Spencer. Okay, I also have an idea, and I think it has something to do with the files in the game, because, like, I like to go through game files. I'm not gonna lie. I love going through game files. But, one of the thing, one of the files is, a uh, there's a folder called Genesis. Let me, let me pull the shit up. I feel like this might be huge spoilers. Like, I have no clue what the context is. I feel like other people who have actually sat down and played this game as well will understand the context better than me. Like, okay, let me share my, let me share my screen real quick. Okay. Right here. Uh, be under, uh, illustrations. Uh, ties route. Genesis. And I don't know why, but it looks cool like this right here. It has to open up in pink because it's a WebP file, but, like, I feel like this has something to do with what's going on. Or, fuck, even this. That might have something to do with what's going on, but I don't know. My heart sank. I so desperately wished that I had lied. But I just lied. Just made something up. Anything up. To obfuscate the truth. Right? This is like Five Nights at Freddy's level bullshit. Anything to obfuscate the truth and keep Spencer out of harm's way. And to keep the situation from Aiden from becoming so very complicated and messy. But I had not, and as such, had screwed up in the most monumental fashion imaginable. I am so, so sorry. It is my fault. I, I could not bring myself to lie to him. Ty. None of this was even remotely fair on you. Every error, every mistake, every slip of the tongue, the blame can only be traced back to me. I could say little to ease his concerns, but I did what I could. 
I, I do not rightly know if my actions were beneficial. I do hope I have not made things worse, but, but I do hope that I brought him some reassurance, that I was able to ease some of his suspicions. I hate this. I hate that you had to take such a risk for me. It is not fair. I did not have to. I wanted to, because I know that I let you down. Do not think for a moment you could have convinced me not to. I know, I know, I thank you, Spencer, for everything. Spencer smiled at me, sending his kindness radiating through the room. Finally stood up from his chair in his usual delicate manner, his smile unbroken as he spoke once again. You take good care of that ring, understand? I have a feeling you might be needing it again soon. Honestly, like, I am half tempted to, like, play this on my own and just, like, figure out what the fuck's going on, but I'm not going to do that. I grasped the makeshift necklace once more. Spencer was right. I hoped and prayed that the next time I gifted it to someone, that it would be the last time. Hey, Spence, one thing before you go. What is it? I know I should not say so. I know it is wrong, but I simply must say so. I, I need you to hear it. I... I... Aiden, you need to book it. Instead, when I pressed my ear up to the exhaust, the distinctive sound of voices drifted into earshot from afar. It was difficult to hear them clearly, but sufficient enough that I would be able to grasp what was being discussed. I eased into a more comfortable position and strained my ears in an attempt to pick up as much of the conversation as I could. I know I should not say so, I know it is wrong, but I simply must say so. I, I need you to hear it. And now is the moment where I heard the words that caused my heart to shatter. I will never, ever stop loving you, no matter what. I'm done. I'm done. Motherfucker. Ugh. Ugh. Motherfucking. Ugh. Ty. There was a long and deafening silence in the room that remained unbroken for the longest time. Finally, sound of footsteps followed by the sound of departure. It seemed as though I had arrived just as the conversation was coming to an end, but I had heard everything I needed to hear. I knew that Ty was in love with somebody else, all the while in a relationship with me. He had exerted so much energy in trying to convince me how committed he was, and that would never let me down. And yet, what I, was I just an afterthought? How could any of that been true? As I ran to the bar, the first person I saw was Spencer who flashed me a kindly smile as he walked past. I did not return the smile. I could not even bear to look at him, my mind reduced to a swirling vortex of negative emotions and inexplicable dread. I, I didn't rightly know about how to feel, about any of it. I felt nothing, or was it everything, all at once, characterized by an overwhelming numbness. Was it so much that I simply couldn't process it, or so very little there was nothing for me to process? I felt strangely vindicated. I had been right to be suspicious all along, and to remember all the crap I had said about faith. Pat, fool me once, shame on you. But fool me twice, yeah, I knew. I was a prize idiot. I couldn't believe I'd let myself fall for it all. I returned to my position behind the counter where Diego was waiting. He took one look at me, and his face dropped like a stone. I don't know. I'm like, ah. Diego knew right away. He knew that I had heard something that brought this entire house of cards crumbling down around me. I leaned on the counter, my eyes unfocused and drifting out into space. I, I couldn't believe any of this. I couldn't believe Ty. I God fucking damn it, I was such an idiot. Hello, gentlemen. I, I apologize for my absence. Ty had returned, his neck bearing a ring I had not seen before, and one I had little desire to ask him about. After all, I had more important things on my mind. He seemed somewhat subdued at his first appearance, though having noticed my shift in mood, this did not last long. Aiden? Is everything okay? Oh, uh, yeah, Aiden is just, um, I'm fine. Y yeah, what he said, he's fine. I see. Very well, then. Thank you for taking care of everything in my absence. No problem. It was my pleasure. Terrific. I wanted to thank you as well, Diego, for looking after everything while Aiden and I were out of town. And I apologize for having relied on you so heavily during recent times. <laughs> yeah, uh, whatever it takes for you two to, to be happy, I guess. 
I don't like you, Diego, but I am glad to hear you are in high spirits. I really appreciate your help, and everything was in surprisingly good order when I arrived back this morning. Yeah, wasn't too bad. Turn, turns out I'm a pretty, pretty good barman and stuff. Indeed. Well, part of the reason I brought Russell on board was to give you something of a break. It means that we're Aiden and I to both go somewhere together like before, there will be somebody else to share in the burden. And speaking of Russell, I must say, he's almost finished the catering work and has certainly... He certainly has me impressed. I am very glad to have him and his immense talents on board. Ah, uh, but I digress. The other reason for this topic is because I'd like to offer you the rest of the day off, Diego. And do not worry, it will be paid in full. My treat. What? Really? Indeed, and do be sure to check your account balance this evening. You may find a small surprise there waiting for you. It is my way of saying thank you. Wow, um, great. I, uh, thanks, Ty. Um, you do not need to thank me. You have earned it fair and square. And do not worry about cleaning up or anything. You may leave it all to me. You want me to go now? It is! It fucking is! You may, you make it sound as though I am trying to get rid of you. I can assure you that is not the case, but certainly. Would you like to finish up now? I am quite ready to take over. Oh, well, um... Gail looked towards me, a look of concern and frustration in his eyes. It needed little explanation. After all, I knew exactly how it felt being in the dark. But Ty was practically refusing him the opportunity. A coincidence? Or perhaps my distinctly sour mood had raised his suspicions. Maybe he was trying to dispose of Diego so we could speak one-on-one -on -one in private. Or I was, was I just being crazy? Forming wild and far-fetched conspiracies lacking sufficient evidence. Perhaps it was just a coincidence. Sure, thanks, Ty. Um, see you guys. Have have fun. I'm quite sure we will. Thank you, Diego. Uh, yeah. Diego grabbed his things and semi-begrudgingly began his journey homeward. Within mere seconds following his departure, the buzzing within my pocket commenced. Message after message, no doubt originating from a concerned and still overly nosy Diego, desperate to find out what the story was. I hope you do not mind me, mind my sending him home. I just felt as though he deserved some type of reward for his dedication. I understand. Ah, wonderful. Are you quite sure that you are well? You seem so very off all of a sudden. If you are feeling unwell, you are more than welcome to catch up with Diego and take the rest of the evening easy. I am sure Russell and I can handle things, even if it is a Friday night. I'm fine. If you say so, but please, do not hesitate to let me know if you ever feel unwell. I would much rather that you rest and recover than soldier on through it. And considering we serve food and drink, we would loathe spreading the illness onto our patrons. Patrons, would we? I get it! Uh, oh. I understand. I'm fine. I just... This is very unlike you, my dear. I find myself rather concerned. Has something happened between you and Diego? The atmosphere in here has been so cold. I was, I was certain I could see my own breath. It's fine, just please. Give me some space. We're quiet. I'll handle front of house. Maybe you could help Russell out back? Very well, my dear. Ty placed his hand on my shoulder, clearly intended to provide some sort of comfort. Instead, it only caused me to flinch, prompting Ty to reel his hand back with zero hesitation. His look of concern grew in severity as he pondered his options, eventually relenting as he slipped back into the kitchen without a single word. We're going to leave off here tonight. It is taking everything to not scream at the top of my fucking lungs right now. Jesus Christ, what the fuck? Ugh. Oh my god. I'm going to bring the Bazinga Bird back just so I can do this. Spencer is no longer known as Spencer. He is now known as Bazinga Bird. Fuck you, Bazinga Bird. <laughs> I can't even- I, I want to be mad. I want so desperately to be mad. But... Bazinga Bird. <laughs> B 
Bazinga bird. <laughs> okay, okay. If y'all want to see me make a TikTok, then I guess, like, stick around. But I'm going to end this stream and start a new one. Like, almost immediately after. So, yeah. Stay... Oh, no, Spencer's fucking dead. He's fucking dead. No, wait, sorry, I used it wrong. Bazinga Bird is fucking dead. He's dead. Anyways, I gotta, like, end the video or something. Like, stay safe, have a good night, and I'll see y'all tomorrow. But if you want to stick around and watch me make a TikTok, uh... Just stick around. <laughs>